and welcome to Manitowoc Ice Service Training Center. My name is Jonathan Bailey, and we're going to be looking really quick at the Manitowoc Flaker Nugget removal of the auger today on this ice machine. So here we have one set up. Now it's not going to look quite like yours does because I've removed it from the cabinet to make it easy to access. Everything you see me do though can be done within the cabinet of this machine and removed auger nice and easy with the bolts on the bottom and on the top. So set up nice and easy for service. A lot of augers are very difficult to take apart in the industry. This one is nice and easily set up. So let's go ahead and take a look at it uh, on this evaporator assembly. And you're gonna see this is a side discharge evaporator. So the ice comes out the side of this one. Some of them they'll be coming out of the top. So I've taken the insulation off the top. And again, remember, I've cut this out of the machine just to make it easier for you to see. You don't have to recover the refrigerant and cut the pipes. So I'm gonna undo the four top hex head Allen bolts and they're metric. So make sure you have a metric set uh, to undo this with. All the hardware on our flakers and nugget evaporator assemblies are European metric style hardware on those systems. So four bolts coming out the top of the machine. And also I would probably drain the water out of this evaporator too. So I've disconnected the tube at the bottom, depending which model it is, or I've opened the drain line on it and purged the water out of this barrel style evaporator. Once I have this top plate out the way, it comes off with these four bolts. Then I can go ahead and remove the auger. So the top auger cut ahead assembly, I'll just grab that and I'll pull it slowly out the evaporator. And now you can see the auger. Why would I do this? Well, I'm looking to see if there's any scale on this auger, because that could give me a good indication on whether it needs cleaning or not. This one's nice and clean, obviously, right now. So we want to see this. We don't want to see a bunch of white scale on there. And I'll also take a look down inside the evaporator barrel to see if I see a lot of scale on there too. Now you see the water seal. This is the first part of the water seal, the top side of it. And you can, you do not have to replace the water seal every time you remove the auger. Some manufacturers, every time you take an auger out, you have to replace the water seal. So you have to have one with you. This one, you do not have to do that. But if you are gonna change the auger water seal, it slides off the bottom, spring rotates, slides off the bottom, and then you have the top side of the water seal. And I'll show you the bottom side in just a minute. So I'm gonna put this auger out the way. And then on the bottom of the evaporate assembly, you have four metric bolts again, four metric bolts that you're gonna loosen up and take off. And then the evaporator assembly is gonna pull off the base. So it's gonna pull up off the base. And when you've got refrigeration tube still tied to it, you might get it about this high, but that's high enough to get under there and remove the lower water seal or lower bearing. Just so you can see it, I'm gonna flip this over. And now you can see that lower bearing on that evaporator. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that lower bearing on it. You're gonna have to cut that part. Somebody jammed it in there. All right, so lower bearing in the bottom of the evaporator. Sometimes they slide right out, depending if they've got scale on them. And you're gonna see this one's kind of stuck in there, but not to worry. There is an additional feature on this unit that lets you remove the lower bearing housing. Right on the edge of this bottom of the auger, there's a little divot in the bottom edge and you can put something flat in there and you can pull down the lower bearing housing. So if the bearing is seized in the bottom of the evaporator with scale um, and rust, then you can take out the whole lower bottom bearing assembly. I'm just gonna get something to do that with on this unit. So 
So I'm going to put a little flat bladed screwdriver in there and take out the lower bearing assembly housing. So the housing comes out. I'm going to put this to the side a little bit and focus on this lower housing now. So the bearings in the bottom, this normally will just slide right out, but as you can see, this one's kind of seized in there. So then I can just change this whole housing assembly. Now here's the other part of that water seal. So this is the lower part of the water seal and it would be sitting in the machine this way. Get my fingers out of the way for you. And then this would be sitting on the top of it turning. So this is your water seal. Water seal is very important in evaporator assemblies. So if you're going to replace the water seal because it's leaking, you're going to replace this top piece, the white part, and then the bottom piece, which is a black material. And it's kind of fragile. It's almost like a coffee cup material. And if you drop it on the floor, it will break. It's pretty solid, but if you drop it on the floor, it will break in that ice machine. So you can replace the lower seal, the top seal. You can inspect the auger. We can replace the bearing down here on the bottom. And we've done this all without removing the evaporator from the ice machine. The refrigerant tubes could still be connected to it. There's enough room in here to get it up about five, six inches to get the clearance you need to remove those parts. And of course, reassembly is the reverse. So that's a side discharge evaporator. All our evaporators are very similar. Doesn't matter which unit you're working on, they're very similar to this. Um, and next we'll take a look at a top discharge evaporator.